Hey guys, so I'm starting my fall cleanup today and I get a lot of questions asked as for which perennials do I cut down, which ones I leave for the winter. And I will walk through the garden today and I will show you the ones that I absolutely cut down, the ones that I leave. And then there are some that are sort of in between and the answer is it depends. The number one perennial that I cut down in the fall is a peony. Now, peony doesn't have any aesthetic value in winter landscape. And also by the end of the summer, it is covered in powdery mildew in my area. So not to perpetuate that uh, problem, I cut the tops um, and I throw them away in the garbage because I cannot compost them. Otherwise the spores will spread around. Now, on the other hand, there is a wonderful perennial right here, right next to the peonies. This is um, geranium mycorrhizum on both sides. This one I do not touch. It is actually a semi evergreen in my um, area. So I don't do anything with it. It is just beautiful all year round. Now true lilies or lilium, I also cut down because they do not look that pretty in the winter. Here's a beautiful euchre, and this one is called Autumn Bride. I do not cut my euchres down because they do stay semi-evergreen in my zone. What I do is I just clean up the lower leaves to make them a little bit prettier for the winter. Now this particular euchre actually changes into beautiful fall color. It's almost burgundy. I see it starting on this leaf already. Um, and it's actually been living in this pot. This is going to be the second winter. Here's another plant that I absolutely cut down in the fall and it's phlox. Uh, phlox is very prone to powdery mildew in our area. So I cut down the tops and I uh, put them in the garbage to make sure that I don't spread the spores of the fungus around. Um, now, on the other hand, I have this sage right here. This is uh, Salvia officinalis. This one I leave, it actually has beautiful winter interests. It stays evergreen or semi evergreen in my zone. And I love to look at it when it's covered with frost. There's a whole group of plants I could talk about in this spot. And the first one is this white wood aster. And you see those little white puffs on it? Those are seeds. And I love the look of them. However, this plant is a prolific self-seeder in the garden and can get quite aggressive. So I have to cut those tops off and I have to do it carefully. And it helps to have a bag right by your side to put it in. Now, once I cut some of the aster, you will be able to see this beautiful Christmas fern right here. Now the Christmas fern I do not cut because it is evergreen in my area. I do clean it up a little bit in the spring, but it looks great all winter long. Now here's an interesting plant as to whether you should be pruning it in the fall or spring. This is Helleborus. And I do not prune my Helleborus in the fall or spring. I actually prune it in the winter. And I have uh, different types of Helleborus and some of them actually bloom in the beginning of January. But in order for me to see those beautiful blooms, I have to cut around the foliage a little bit and clean it up because um, after some of our terrible winter weather, it looks pretty bad. So I'll just carefully prune it um, around Christmas time, actually. And these particular types of Helleborus bloom really early in the spring. So I come out around February time and I just clean up some of the leaves. Now, here's a plant that I absolutely prune in the fall. This is Solomon Seal, and it had the most beautiful fall color this year. But after really uh, hard frost, it starts to look like mush, and I have to prune it down. All right, let's talk about grasses a little bit. I do not prune a majority of my grasses in the fall because they provide such beautiful winter structure. 
So like this Miscanthus right here and Hakinakloa, even after some heavy snowstorms, they stand up to the weather really well. Now there are some exceptions that I will show you in a minute. Here's the first grass that I prune in the fall. This is Pinicetum. Pinicetum actually doesn't stand up to the weather uh, really well. We actually had a couple of um, really tough windstorms and rainstorms and it's already flopping. It does not stand up to uh, snow load at all. So I usually just cut it in the fall. Also in some areas it can be invasive. The seed heads just spread all over and that is for uh, that is another reason why I prune it to make sure there's no um, spreading it around the garden. Now here's another grass that I prune in the fall. This is a little blue stem and under perfect conditions it actually stands up beautifully to the weather and it looks amazing in the winter but I do not have perfect conditions here and I don't have enough sun and that's why it actually starts to flop already in the summer and I have to cut it in the fall but if um, your little blue stem is in um, lots of sun if it doesn't flop I would just leave it for the winter because it's it's gorgeous here is a grass that I do not prune in the fall and it looks absolutely beautiful this is a panicum and I have a number of panicums in my garden they stand up to the weather really well. They actually provide a lot of food for birds in the winter, those little seed heads right there. And here's another panicum. This is Shenandoah. Again, beautiful upright structure and food for birds in the winter. And here's my beautiful Joe Pie weed. I do love the way this plant looks in the winter landscape. I love these uh, puffy seed heads. However, I have a, a special situation here in my sidewalk garden. This is highly trafficked area and sometimes when people pass by, they brush against seed heads, they fly all over, they cling to their clothes. And um, these um, can actually spread by seed quite profusely in the garden. So I cut the seed heads down and I cut the entire plant down to about 18 inches because they have hollow stems where insects can nest for the winter. Um, but if I lived in a more wilder setting, I would definitely leave all of my Joe Pie weed to stand just like this uh, the entire winter. As for the clematis, regardless of the group that they're in, I prune them in early spring. Here's an epimedium. I do not prune it in the fall. I just clean it up slightly in the spring. Now this right here is what's left of perennial hibiscus. And I do prune it all the way to the ground because these canes right here are done for the season. Now here's a plant I absolutely leave for the winter, both winter interests and wildlife. This is Echinacea. They look gorgeous in the snow. Um, here's another plant that I do not prune in the fall. This is Lamb's Ear. It looks pretty much like this all winter long and I uh, do clean it up early in the spring. Here's a plant I do prune in the fall. This is Iris and I do prune all of my irises, the bearded, the Siberian, and the Japanese, because after a couple of really hard frosts in the fall, their foliage starts to flop and then it turns pretty much into mush. So I just go down to the crown of the plant and I prune it. Now, as for the catmint, I really didn't find any difference between pruning it in the fall or the spring. And for me, it really depends on what your plant looks like right now. For example, my catmint has a lot of insect damage right now, so I'm going to prune it in the fall because I don't want to harbor over any of the insect eggs. Um, and I'm going to uh, throw away all the debris in the garbage. 
but if this plant looked pretty healthy I could uh, pretty much leave it until the spring. Here's some of the milkweed I have in the garden and I do not cut it down because I actually really enjoy the look of the seed heads. They're very unusual and I do not mind this particular milkweed spreading in the garden. This is a tuberosa, Asclepias tuberosa. Uh, I do not have any of the common milkweed because it is quite aggressive in our area, but all the other milkweeds, I just let it uh, let them seed in the garden. Here is my beautiful Amsonia hubrichtii and it had a gorgeous fall color display. But in a couple of weeks, all of these little leaves will actually fall off and this plant will look um, just like a bunch of sticks and I will prune it at that time. Now here's another beautiful fern that stays evergreen in my area of New Jersey. This is Autumn Brilliance and it looks just like this all winter lawn. Uh, it looks beautiful with the frost and a little bit of a snow cover on it. So I do not cut it in the fall. I do clean it up a little bit in the spring. Um, now, this whole bed behind me is actually a bed of hostas, and they just finished their gorgeous uh, fall color show and ready to be cut down because they do harbor some of the diseases, lots of slug issues on them, so I'm going to cut them down and put all of the debris in the garbage. All right, you guys, I hope this video was helpful as you start your own fall cleanup, and thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new in this video, and I will see you in the next one.